name is Unique Yazi. I am a Danak mother, creative advocate, and designer. I am Nanashtaja Chachini, born from Ma'i Dish Gizhni, and grew up on the Navajo Nation in Chinle, Arizona. I left at a very young age uh, when I finished high school and realized that I wanted to utilize my creativity to empower my community. Um, it was through a lot of community activation and just really being involved with family and the chapter house and just different things that were happening in the area that I was able to see that my skill sets could really lend to the dynamic story of our people. And what really rooted me in all of this was the fact that um, on the reservation, I was able to learn about my identity, really grasp the cultural aspects behind it, and um, center my values and align them to the mission that I wanted to, to create, which my, my grandmother always instilled in me that whatever I learned and whatever I did outside of the res, that she wanted me to learn it all so that I could bring it back to my people. Um, and so with that idea, I decided to leave the res and go to school and really um, focus on the computer and technology. I knew this was going to be my biggest resource and uh, biggest tool to be able to amplify the ideas and elevate them into different stories that I wanted to tell. Um, I did that through people, uh, building relationships with people, working with diverse, uh, a diverse amount of teams. Um, we were also able to develop tools and resources. Uh, we created patterns, guidelines, and also um, just different formats for aligning brands and really creating that long-lasting identity system. Um, and it was through these different sorts of collaborations and cooperation that I was able to really structure the way that I wanted to uh, run my business. And so um, with my business, I was also able to create um, and found uh, a group called Indigi Design Collab. And we started to work on really creating this narrative around design and what it means to be an indigenous designer. Um, and that's when, uh, when, about the time that COVID hit um, was when I was struggling and also trying to find different places and spaces and reimagine them with all the natives that I was working. And that's when I met the dynamic team of Indigenous Community Collaborative. So Gamadu, hello everyone. My name is Melody Lewis. I'm Mojave Tewa and Hopi raised on the Fort Mojave Indian Reservation, which is one of the 22 nations here in Arizona. I'm the founder for Indigenous Community Collaborative and the co-founder for Cahokia Social Tech and Art Space. So like Unique, I too was raised on the reservation. However, I had river as a backyard instead of a canyon. So I would go to the river every day, dusk till dawn. Um, but I left my community on a basketball scholarship. When I left my community, it was complete culture shock for me. I was away from my family, away from my community, and always longed to be home. When I arrived to the campus, it was very apparent that I was the only native there. I could walk into the space and be fully self-aware that I am literally the only native in this space. So fast forward to present day as a business owner and as an entrepreneur, that story still exists. I am still the only native in the space, still the only um, one at the table where important decisions are being made, made on behalf of native folks. So we created Indigenous, Indigenous Community Collaborative to increase the representation of native into certain careers and certain spaces, uh, and also to revitalize that indigenous perspective. So we met each other right when times were shifting and we had to reimagine all of our spaces. We had begun working on doing the Rise poster show a year previous and with the lack of galleries and really just being safety uh, precautious, we wanted to start um, creating posters and do a call for art that allowed for projection to be done on the walls and the buildings in downtown Phoenix. Um, but along with this idea, a lot of the Indigi Design collab collaborators wanted to incorporate broadcasting skills and to, to go live. Um, and so we went after a project, uh, a community uh, grant that was being offered, and it really helped us elevate our pitch and help us put out the information that we needed uh, to get this going. We started focusing on the theme and realized that we wanted to create uh, more story and more narrative around the Native vote. We had asked and we met Indigenous Community Collaborative, and uh, they 
they had already had a YouTube channel and were creating these discussions and we had asked them to collaborate with us to create this conversation live on spot. It is through this collaboration that we really fully realized that there's a power in collaborating with individuals that have the same mission, but also have the same lived experiences. As I reflect now, I looking back at that event, I'm like, man, why was it so easy and so seamless for us to collaborate? And it really goes back to talking about that indigenous way of collaboration and how that fosters us to do such amazing things using our own skill sets and our own strengths. So everything Unique is talking about in this creative space is everything that we want to achieve with our company. So it's like she's doing the same exact thing, but calling it something different. <laughs> we're doing the same exact thing she's doing, but we're calling it something in our field and in our scope. So ultimately we're trying to achieve the same outcome, which is to, again, uh, reclaim that narrative and then to revitalize the indigenous perspective. In our culture, we are trying to make generational impact. And for the two of us, this shows up in different ways. For me, the indigenous perspective and way of life was really um, rooted when I grew up outside of the reservation. I grew up in Utah and in South Dakota, and it was in those spaces that I realized that I had access to all sorts of things. I had access to grocery stores, had access to the YMCA, community events. They were just a walk away. But when I moved to the reservation around nine years old, it was all removed, it was all taken away. And I realized that I needed to really think about what I was going to do in my life that was gonna be able to provide access to all these things that are missing. And so I began to really think about how my community members might not know about the, some of these experiences. Um, but the cool thing was that I was able to step outside my door and really be a part of nature in a different way. I learned stories from my grandparents and my aunts and my uncles that really resonated with me and told me about my long history and about the culture that I come from. I was able to connect with the land and just roam around being a free spirit and really develop my creativity. Um, and it was from that space that I realized that the indigenous worldview is very different from a westernized worldview. And this means that there are two different ways that we're living and I had to figure out where I was and how I was going to be in those spaces. And for me, growing up on the reservation and coming to the city was culture shock for me. When I think about identity and how that has played a role in my life, it's a critical one. My parents had raised me to want to get an education and leave the reservation and come back. So I wasn't really learning about my culture or my identity. So I felt like something was missing. And so going away to school as I'm navigating these spaces, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get my education, I'm gonna get a job and I'm gonna come back. But I still wasn't whole. I still didn't feel like, you know, I had this um, completeness to me until I discovered my identity and my cultural heritage. That's when I really started being like, wow, this is a totally different lens for me. So using identity as a fuel and a source to foster collaboration is going to take us a long way um, to create the impact that we want to see for my siblings and my nieces and my nephews. In order to create positive impact in our communities and among our families, we really have to begin to find our balance. We have to begin to heal each other and heal ourselves. With the more knowledge that we're learning about our past and our history and the more stories that are being revealed, there's a lot of trauma that we have to work through and we can do this together through collaboration. It's with these methods of circular thinking and uh, just the impact that we want to make, that common vision, it really aligns us and makes sure that we are trying to create a ripple effect that will not only serve us, but also benefit future generations to come. When we collaborate in an indigenous way, we really do have to take our full selves, our identities and our lived experiences in order for us to make a generational impact. Today, 
Impact within our families and communities is seen as an individual endeavor. It is disconnected from those who came before us and those who are going to come after us. This is the westernized worldview. It is not communal, it is not collaborative, and it is not open to different perspectives. I saw a lot of this through a lot of the stories that my parents would tell me about how they were removed from their homes and their identities were stripped from them. They were no longer able to practice their cultural um, ceremonial practices, but even speaking their own language. They had to quickly learn a different system and become a different person. When these things happen um, and when people come together, we realize that there are going to be differences in opinion, there is going to be tension, and there's gonna be emotional clashes because we are revisiting those traumas that our parents had to live through, and we are learning how to collaborate through that. The indigenous approach to collaboration really considers our identity as the foundation for how we make decisions. It's not an experience. It's not about being a good collaborator or being a good um, supporter through this initiative. It really is truly uplifting individuals and our full identities so we can make a generational impact. What has come from us being able to work together and share our experiences within Cahokia is now we have an indigenized approach to collaboration. We're able to share our identities and share our culture and align through circular thinking, value alignment, and consensus. When we take into consideration our full roles and our identities, we are able to plant the seeds to cultivate the approach for Indigenous collaboration. I am Melody. And I'm Unique. And, and this, this is Praxis, Praxis in Action. action.